The Church Worldwide, the global recovery vessel reaching millions of vulnerable souls all over the entire world with the voice of Christianity, bringing the message of salvation, healing, teaching and deliverance to the brokenhearted, pointing all believers and non-believers to the resurrected Christ in his full immortal body, which is the Church of the Living God, the celestial city of the heavenly in Jerusalem. You are all welcome on board with us. Please join us now as Dr. Edmund brings a message of faith, hope, and deliverance. You are most welcome to the moment of recovery with the Kingdom Recovery Church. And God bless you. Kingdom Recovery Church is of the Church Worldwide International. This program is for you. You are part of this program. Uh, we're just going to bring you uh, a program you are about to watch and uh, I'm inviting you to view our programs every 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning. And um, I also want to say to you, uh, you have all opportunity. Uh, in case you have your internet, you go to www or if that is too long for you, just type in recoveryworld.tv and you will view us live, sometimes pre-recorded. God richly bless you. And um, I also want to say, hopefully, today God is going to minister to the needs of your spirit, soul, and body. I believe God who have done several miracles and blessings that you are about to watch, I mean, will do for you beyond your expectation. Now at the moment, let's go to the program that is already in progress. And I will get back to you as soon as the program is over to pray with you. And when I pray with you, you can lay your hands on your television screen. Distance is not a barrier, you know, to uh, uh, God touching you, reaching you uh, right at the point of your need. And God bless you. Thank you. Tongue that will rise up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Doesn't mean that you should start reviling or quarreling. No. If I wrote a note to God, I would speak what's in my soul. So thank you, Jesus. I'd ask for all the hate to be swept away. The Lord will be the fish spirit. Snake spirit, look at that, look at that. That's the second serpent today. Look at that. Look at that. So, so. If I vote a no to God, I put my heart out on each page. What we see as death is when somebody lies down and dies, they carry the person. And people begin to cry. Oh my God, this man that says Gary. Ah, and uh, the, the Gary, my, no more Gary now. That's all we know. You don't, we don't know that that is not death. That is the first death which Jesus Christ even died for us. What is called death is being separated from God forever. That is called death. Being separated from the Almighty God. Because when someone has died here, he only transfigured. You see the body here, but the person is traveling. The body is not important, the dust. The person that used that body has gone. So, if that person died in sin, there's no cause for the angels to rejoice. What do you think Jesus meant when he said here, in Luke 15, Jesus made a statement in verse number 7. He says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that did what? Repented. Are you with me? More than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Let us be glad and rejoice because the 
because of the wife of the lamb, hath made herself ready. We are rejoicing, but we are not ready. You know that is number one. You have seen it now three times. Jesus is not going to die again. Oh, let me show you that so that you understand. You know, uh, even if I, 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 what if I say I want to show you the scripture today? Even if it's going to take a very short time, but I will give you the scriptures. You see, like in Romans uh, chapter 6, in verse 10, let's say verse 9 to begin with, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. So he has finished dying. Because of what number three represents in the Bible. The number of completion. He has completed it. He's no more going to die again. This is true. So, let us rejoice and be glad because Christ died. You know, during the time of Easter, I asked one gentleman after the, the Lord gave me inspiration to preach the Easter message to them. <clears throat> I said, what do you understand in this message? He said that this time is a time of sober reflection where people should stay in a morning mood because Christ died. That is wrong. It is you and I that will remain in sober reflection against ourselves because we have died and we don't care to resurrect. Not Christ. If you love God and know the scriptures, you will remember that when the women of Jerusalem were crying, lamenting after Christ, he said to them, do not cry for me, but do what? Cry for yourselves and for your children, because you don't understand what I'm doing. That thing carried on to this generation. They keep on crying for Christ. And Christ is crying for you. This is the problem now. We, have not, we are not rejoicing. The only rejoicing we rejoice here is that my sister's daughter delivered peacefully. The only rejoicing we are rejoicing here is that my son has been failing the examination, but now he passed jam. The only rejoicing we are rejoicing here is on ordinary things. We don't have the main joy. That's why sin continues. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you are delivered from the sorrow, because Opposite of rejoicing our joy is somebody say sorrow. That's it. Somebody say sorrow. sorrow. You see, if you do not know the sort of sorrow that has been taken away from you, you cannot rejoice. The only rejoicing you rejoice is that, oh, last night, some bad people came to our street. They break into our premises. They went around, went around, and uh, God saved us. That's a miracle. I love that miracle. But I want to say to you, what the Lord took away from you is more than that. Why wouldn't God preserve you? I mean, God will have to preserve what belongs to him, his own thing. No, think about it. You see, let us rejoice, and let us be glad and rejoice. Why? Because the marriage of the Lamb has come. And her, his wife has made herself ready. Now when you begin to think of what is, what is this? Who is this his wife? He's talking of the church. The church is the wife of the lamb. He's coming to wed the church. Just as we shall see here in a few moments from now, where people will come together and then remind ourselves of how their marriage began and everything. 
The church is the wife of the lamb. Jesus Christ is coming for a wedding to wed the church. To take the church away. Like a husband goes to take his wife away. I told you that marriage began this world and marriage will end this world. Every creature God made in, in, the, in, in the Garden of Eden, he made every creature male and female. And then when he uh, 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 you know, uh, delivered man after forming the man of the dust of the ground. So he breathed the true man into that and man became a living soul. And again, he gave him a wife. I said, this is your wife. That's how this world started. And again, I tell you that this world destroyed before that this world ended before you've been hearing the story that God sent flood. God is not wicked. God sent flood and flood destroyed this world. Yes, he did. He made it. He can destroy it. If what was made refused to know the maker. Look at that. So it was because the sons of God is not something of today. Those that believe in the blood lineage sacrifice from the time of Abel, Seth, Enos, Methuselah, and so on, to, Adam, uh, to, to Noah, you see, the sons of God, because they believe in the blood sacrifice. Why? Because it was through blood, Adam and Eve were saved. Through blood. So, Abel kept to that, Ken refused. So those who are of the Ken's lineage, are called the children of the world. Worldly people. They don't regret that. They fight. They persecute the, uh, uh, you know, the church. The preparing wife of the lamb. So he killed Abel. God replaced Abel with Seth. Seth reproduced in us. And people multiplied. Marriage in the, at, a, at a time... The sons of God declined and said, we are all one. We are the same. We all are the same thing. They, be, they went into the world and said, look at these children of God. They don't make up. They don't paint their mouth. They don't uh, uh, put that, um, um, the, this uh, white things on their eyes, which they, you know, make them look somehow. And they, they don't dress well. I mean, they don't, they, they don't make up like the world. Oh, when you go to the world, you see somebody, you know, at least when the movement is moving, it's just moving in a very special way. How? Oh! He said, hey, this one, now, wow. He said, but when you come to the house of God, they're always very gentle. No, 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 no. So their eyes went to the world. They began to marry the people of the world. And God says, that's so. <laughs> My own sons, I will teach you a lesson. And he sent flood and wiped everything away because of marriage. Somebody said, mismanagement of marriage <laughs> attracts the anger of God. <laughs> Are you understanding? That's what happened. That's how this world ended. Now, the Lord began again. And this world also will come to an end. But it's going to be through marriage. Marriage began it. Marriage mediated it. And marriage will end it. We don't know what's called marriage. <laughs> we don't know. You know, some ladies still have some men, some men friends, because their husbands are not well to do. You know, and uh, they maintain them. Why should another man be maintaining you when you're a married woman and your husband does not know that? You know, that is the sin. So many sins are going on. I mean, why should you be praying for God to give you a husband, whereas you cannot rest and close your legs and wait for the man that will marry you? Which God will give you the man that you're already disgracing? Because the man that will marry you, you are disgracing him. You have no respect for him. You have no regard for him. You don't even have any love reserved for the man God will send to you for marriage. 
No love reserved for him. So you are using your body as you like and asking God to bless you with marriage. What type of God is that? That's the God of the serpent, the dragon. He's the, he's the God of the false heaven, not the true God. You see, you need to understand what marriage is. Marriage is terrible. Can I tell you, it's marriage that, that is keeping this building standing. This building you see, is marriage. I mean, what do I mean by that? Now listen, let me tell you what marriage is. Everything you see, the camera is marriage. Vehicle is marriage. You see vehicle, you just get a key. You start it, and it, 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 you know, it, it starts, and you start moving it. It's marriage that causes it. But you may not understand until I explain it. Everything you see here is marriage. What am I talking about? Even your body is a marriage. Your hand is married to your body. That's why your hand is there. How many times have you left your house, you are going to the market or you're going to the workplace, you forgot your hand in the house? No, 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 no answer me now. How many times? You forgot your leg. You wake up, you want to go to the bathroom. Before you know, you forgot, you forgot your leg on the, on the bed. No. Someone said, my leg is married to my body. My hand is married to my body. That is marriage. You see these things. All these things you see, they are connections. They are things that agree with each other. That's where they are standing. Marriage is agreement. And this agreement is a covenant. So as I use your hand and leg or whatever to give you an example, that is how marriage is. It's a covenant. That is covenant. That, when you hear that covenant is agreement, not just the one businessman can write and then after they, they fell, oh, this, sorry, the thing didn't work again as we said. No. When somebody wakes up, the hand died, the leg died. He begins to look for help because there's a disfigure. You see, mismanagement of marriage brings disfigure. Can somebody say that? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Please always repeat this in so that they can be part of you. Somebody say, mismanagement of marriage, marriage. brings a disfigure. This disfigure is both spiritual and physical. You see? And again, Christ is coming as the lamb. Why is he coming to wed now? He has not wedded. They have been walking relentlessly. He walked in heaven. He walked in the Garden of Eden. And when he came, not only that he came to walk on us as well, to take away sin from heaven, take away sin from the paradise. Listen. If you go to the uh, Revelation chapter, uh, chapter uh, 22, I don't know whether you read the Bible at all. Let me show you. See what happened here in verse 2. It says, and in the midst of the street of it, that is heaven, the kingdom of heaven, and on either side of the river. Oh, my God. Kai, swimmers get ready because you are swimming this river. Was there the what? What do you see there? No, you didn't see anything there. What do you see there? So listen. You see that? What do you see there? The tree of life. Okay, before, where was the tree of life? Where did you see the tree of life before? In the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was where? On earth. It's after Iraq. After Mesopotamia. After Iraq. That's where Garden of Eden is. That's where it was. It's still there. But the main, the main garden and the tree of life, those angels the Lord sent to replace Adam and Eve there took the tree of life into heaven. Because the blood was shed there. That tree was redeemed and taken to heaven. You can see for yourself. That's why I say the Bible you're having, I, I tell you, the day you know what you have, you rejoice. You see? So, Besides that, now Christ had been, not only that Christ came to save us here as he saved the angels and saved Adam and Eve, I will tell you that Jesus Christ, when he died, his spirit went to preach to those people, the sons of God, who died, according to the Bible, in the days of Noah. 
who made the errors. He had pity on them because they have not known him. So he went to preach to them. Those of them that believed him, perhaps, I don't know how many, they came out with him when he resurrected and he took them to heaven. They are no more there now. So that he will be, be, be uh, the judge of the living and the dead. You see? So th those who died, he preached to them as he's preaching to us and took them to heaven. Of course, that's the truth. In fact, when they appeared, they went to the holy city. They went round in the holy city. And he took them to heaven. You know, people, some think that when you just, when somebody dies, he remains in the grave there. When you see the bone, I said, this is the person. No, this was the body of the person. The person is not there. He's not there. He's a spirit. Man is a spirit. That's why you dream. Your body doesn't dream. It is your spirit that dreams. You see? So, this marriage of the Lamb is talking about you, the church. My name is Sister Oni Ondonjaefi. When I was traveling, it was a peaceful journey. But on my way back, said I said, I will not get back to Lagos. But he never knew that God is a master planner. Praise the Lord. When we left Umaya, God just used a man in that vehicle. We were praising God. We were singing. You won't believe that it's a, a passenger's vehicle. It was as if we were going for a crusade. Not knowing that the enemy has planned to take his own life, not my own life. Because I will not leave, leave my children for any, or, you know, anybody to train. So it happened before we get to, that was, we were just close to, this thing happened at, uh, very close to Okada, Benin. Before you knew it, the tire of the vehicle, you know, removed. I said within a twinkle of an eye, it was too sudden. The vehicle tumbled inside the boot. I thought I was gone. I was, I traveled with this, my little girl. I thought, because if you see this vehicle, you will not be that a soul could come out from that vehicle. My God. When I regained consciousness was when people that came to rescue us, you know, held me. Then I regained consciousness. I said, God, am I alive? And I remember that I was carrying this, my daughter, when this thing happened. I, I only managed to speak, because then I couldn't walk. I couldn't move my neck. See, please, all about the fact, you see, it was indeed a fatal accident. You come and see people. Come and see blood everywhere. People, you know, got injured. Then I managed to ask, I said, where is my baby? They say, don't talk. It's like my head become 10. They say, don't talk. They lift this girl. Is she your baby? I say, yes. Nothing happened to her. She was the only one in the vehicle. The rest of us, we, in fact, we are we were badly injured. She was the only one. Not, not even a scratch. Not even a scratch, in fact. What God did is still a mystery to me. God is too much. God is too much. Oh, my God. Because I lost my husband. This month, maybe four years, I lost my husband. God said, no way. You won't go anywhere. You will not leave this to your children to suffer. In fact, you know, God just used a man. When this girl saw this man, she was crying. The man said, wow, was this pregnant? They said, yes. This man had pity on me. Then I was lying helplessly. They were looking for a vehicle that would take us to the hospital. And the distance to the hospital is still far away. Then the man asked, where is this vehicle going to? They said, it's going to Lagos. He was the one that went and brought my bags and everything. He started calling my people. He said, who should I call? I called the names of my siblings. He started calling them. He said, where are they? They said, they're at Lagos. He said, you see, this, the distance to the, uh, you know, the hospital is very far. Then I want to go and you know, plead with the, my driver. If you agree, I will bring this, girl, this lady down to Lagos so that it will be easier for you people to take care of her. That was how they brought me to Lagos. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move this my neck. In fact, God is too much. Why are you holding this now? Yes, this is in their color. I was using to support my neck for almost a month. Then on the 16th of October, exactly a month that I had that accident, I came for counseling to meet the man of God. He prayed with me. He prayed with me. This neck, initially, I could not turn, you know, to my left. Even if I'm crossing the major road, I only look, you know, the right. I'll just use my senses to cross. But since that day that the apostle prayed, I tell you, I can now turn when I want to cross. Since that 16th, I, I don't use this necklace again. In fact, God is in black. I shall praise the Lord. I shall praise the 
the Lord. That is why my family and my father are here to thank God because he did, a, in fact, a marvelous work. You see this God, I don't know how to praise him. Hello, viewer. Thank you for staying tuned with us patiently and enjoying yourself on the things God is doing on the moment of recovery of the Kingdom Recovery Church. And I want to say to you now, I'm going to pray for you as I promised you. I told you, remember, I said, when we come to the end of the program that you just watched, in case you did watch, actually, now I will be praying with you. I mean, what's your problem? What wouldn't God do for you? I want you just to lay hands right on your screen and leave your hands where you have your element. You have a testimony. Because what God did for A, he would do it for B. The Lord is liberal. He's a good God. Come on. Let's pray. And God bless you. Now, precious God Almighty, before whom I stand, I pray for this individual who has need of freedom from some ailment. And uh, he has need of blessings. And the blessing of the womb, blessing of job, blessing of some bountiful opportunity. So I pray that you do that exactly as they require. Touch that fellow that had goiter, the one that had a pen at the back, something hooking on your back as if you have a load on your back. It's pain. It wouldn't just go, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, I thank you because you've done it for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now receive the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Receive freedom from that land you are struggling with someone. Receive freedom. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And that's it. You got it. Because you asked for it. Now, give me a boss. Give me a testimony. Call on the numbers you can find on your screen. And uh, don't fail to watch the recoveryworld.tv on the internet. Where we stream live on a daily basis. And uh, I want to say to you, uh, send us email and tell us what God has done for you. And uh, give us a call for counseling. And I believe that God will speak to you and uh, bring a blessing to your way. I believe you are the next in line to be blessed. And God richly bless you. Once again, every Sunday at between 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. every Sunday. Watch us on this same channel and God richly bless you. Bye for now. In the recovery, and we believe that you have been blessed by the word from the anointed servant of God, Apostle Edna. Have any questions, comments, prayer requests, and testimony you want to share with us? You can do that by sending them to the phone numbers and emails displayed on your screen. For we are ready to hear from you. We hope to see you in another exciting moment of recovery. God bless you.